What did the Quran say about the universe? Muhammad lived in the desert. Maybe they did not know that there are oceans on earth. So how far they were knowing about the universe? Hmm, maybe one of them knew what deserved the Nobel Prize after 14 centuries. In 2011, three scientists, Brain Schumert, Saul Perlmutter, Adam Rice, were awarded the Nobel Prize. They studied tens of supernovas, stellar explosions, and they found out that the rate of the universal expansion is increasing. The committee confirms that this discovery was surprising to everybody, even the winners of the prize. But Quran says it wasn't a surprise for actually everyone. <laughs> Thus, the Quran has been the first book since 14 centuries ago to point the expansion of the universe. Quran said in the chapter of An'am, And whomsoever it's Allah will to guide, he expandeth his bosom unto the Islam, and whomsoever it is his will to send astray, he maketh his bosom suffocated and narrow, as if he was uplifted in heaven. Thus Allah layeth ignominy upon those who believe not. The signs confirm that if someone ascends in the sky, he will feel suffocation because of lack of oxygen. For how can an illiterate person declare facts that are so deeply scientific when no human being at this age was able to talk about these facts without making any mistakes? during this declaration. I'm not looking for Islam. I'm looking for the truth. Whenever, whatever, and wherever it is, I just want a proof. Second, the miraculous scientific uh, aspect of the Quran. There are some discoveries that were discovered lately in the 20th and the 21st century that made us understand some verses from the Quran that we couldn't fully understand before. And these are what many Muslims like to call the scientific miracles of the Quran. Many of them are really awesome. When people uh, contemplate upon them, it's amazing and it cannot be the word of a human being. The Holy Quran is different from the divine books. It's different from all other religious books because it's filled with universal connotations. The scientific miracle of the Holy Quran that it shows the detailed and accurate scientific reporting of the human body from the start of its conception in the womb as well as other anatomy issues showing the developmental stages of man and his original creation. The Holy Quran has shown the detailed differential stages of the embryo using accurately minute and descriptive terms that totally comply with the actual developmental stages of the embryo. Allah, the one and only God said, Professor Dr. G. C. Goringer, the famous embryologist teaching at Georgetown University in the U.S. said the Quran's description and illustrations of man creation steps is the most accurate description that we or anyone will ever find. But what's the element that's involved in every living cell in all organisms? This needs a biologist. 
But if you say in the desert 1400 years ago and told someone that everything you see has got water in its composition, he wouldn't have believed you for sure. There was no proof of that fact until the microscope was invented. So, we had to wait till it was discovered that the protoplasm, which is the main substance in the cell, is about 80% water. So, uh, in 1694, uh, it was a theory which is called the pre-formation uh, creation, and this uh, is supported by Hart Zucker, and he has uh, shown uh, that the, the uh, man created from the sperm only, and he introduced uh, a drone to this uh, which was laughing uh, now if you see it. Uh, by 1939, by 1839, the two Germans, Schwann and Schleiden, has identified the uh, cells of a man and they mentioned that this is the fundamental for the human creation. By 1985, those scientists uh, has realized that the sperm is a living cell as well as the over. In the past decade, the scientific community recognized the test of falsification theory, which was presented by the Quran. If you claim this book is untruthful, do so to prove it. Write verses like this, try to falsify its facts. For 14 centuries, no one could do it, which proves it's a true book. In 1875, the German scientist Hertog has uh, uh, registered a notice uh, for how uh, the sperm fertilizes the ovum and he proves by this time that they are equally uh, participating in formation of the fertilized ovum and by this time he was the first man uh, to describe the uh, fertilization process between the sperm and the ovum. So uh, before all this the Quran has described all these stages with a miraculous accuracy showing the uh, stages, uh, the developmental stages arranged in a proper way without using any of these techniques and uh, endoscopes. There is a trait in the Quran that does not exist in any other book. When the Quran mentions certain information, it would say to the reader, there is not any manuscript that says, you didn't know it before, neither you nor your people. The polytheists of Mecca, who were in a fierce animosity with Islam, did not disclaim this information, saying that they are not new, or that they knew from where Muhammad brought this, or they already know it. They could never challenge the information because they were really new to them. Professor Dr. Maurice Bukai, the famous French surgeon, said the full match between the Quran and modern science totally refutes and disapproves the assumptions made by those who claim and perceive that the Quran is the words of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so these arrangements this is very uh, comprehensive um, expressions from Quran assured that these are the words of Allah not sure words of any human being, including Prophet Muhammad When the Quran talks about the organisms, it shows extreme accuracy of expression. In Arabic, the verb changes according to gender. So the Quran uses the term that expresses the bees that build the bee cells are females. How did Muhammad know that? Also, 
When Quran talks about the ants, he said that He said it's a female ant and he proved that the ants have a female queen. Then Quran said that the ant talked to the other ants. This was a science fiction at that time. But that's exactly what Professor Robert Heikling discovered in the 90s. And after six years from studying that the insects are really talking with actual voice, after a few words, there is another hint that the Quran used the term crack, not any other verbs. And now we know the ants have external solid skeleton that is actually cracked under pressure. How did Muhammad know these accurate facts? Not only Professor Dr. Maurice Bocai, the famous French surgeon, but also Professor Dr. Charles Baltimore, professor of neurosurgery at Cornell University in the United States, who said, after he knew of the verse 56 in Surat in Nisa in Quran, where all Almighty says, as often as their skins are roasted through fully burnt, we shall change them for fresh skins that they may test the penalty. After his acknowledgement of this verse, he thought and then said that the function of pain sensitivity and how it happens was something we needed to study for decades and the Holy Quran said it in just one statement. So what we will display next, if Allah wills, are some of the scientific facts mentioned in the Quran or as I would like to call it always the nectar of science that's potentially latent in the Holy Quran it's beyond geniality all of these miracles all of those facts legislation philosophy astronomy biology without one mistake without any one little mistake it can never be a human feature una de las cosas que más sorprende a los lectores occidentales del Sagrado Corán es que después de leer con detenimiento algunos de sus capítulos encuentran que no es lo que esperaban y que mucho de lo que habían leído sobre él desaparece al leer unas cuantas páginas por lo que pasa de ser un libro antiguo del desierto a un libro que responde a las preguntas actuales del hombre y se parece más a un mar de conocimiento que a otro libro más para apilar en nuestras bibliotecas. Cada verso del libro de Dios contiene conocimiento que puede ser percibido por los humanos al desarrollar las ciencias y desvelar los secretos del universo y la creación entera. If this book is not a revelation, then it's a deception. If it's a deception, what's deceitful about it? Certainly, if the skeptics insist on their claims that the Quran is a deception, then they have to bring in evidence to support their claim. Otherwise, you would never have the right to do this.